Okay, here we are back inside Make School once again. Thanks for tuning in. Hope the videos are helping you in your designing process. If they are, please go ahead and smash that subscription button. Tap on that notification bell for further on content uploads. Leave me a like, and by all means, take five seconds, drop a comment down below if the videos are helping you out. Also, if you'd like to donate some coffee to the cause, down around here there's a, a super thanks button. You can go ahead and donate some coffee to the cause. Uh, what we're going to do, this is going to be our first in the beginner series, uh, and we're we're going to start from the beginner very basic just opening it up for the first time and working through uh, to uh, beginner designing intermediate designing and advanced designing so it's going to go from the very beginning all the way through to point editing and uh, uh, other type of things uh, so what we're going to do is uh, talk about the interface so this is what uh, we're going to customize each of our interface in case you don't know uh, you could you have two that automatically set up for you so uh, that'll be uh, if you go to the M up here for matrix and you go to view you have your primary and you have your secondary you can see that they're just slightly different set up by default right and we can customize these to uh, maximize and get the most out of what however we want to design uh, and if you look click on your M here and you go to your view you can see what is on by uh, the check marks here here. So you can uncheck them uh, all uh, and get a total, you know, get a lot more viewports, uh, view space, right? Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to set up two different ways. And the reason why I'm going to show this is basically for laptop users, right? Because laptops uh, don't have as much space as monitors. I'm operating off of two monitors. Uh, so uh, I have a lot more space that I use, but I have, uh, I do use a computer quite often. And sometimes it can be a little difficult to see uh, certain things. So we're going to set it up in a way uh, that I think that, uh, laptop users and uh, desktop user or PC users can uh, go ahead and uh, get the most out of their space. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to go to our primary view and set it, set it up. Okay. So we'll go to our M and the, the things that I use the most uh, that I keep going back to the other things uh, that we're not going to load in are ones that I can just go back and easily activate as I need, I, in my personal opinion. So we're in primary one. Uh, I don't, I just click on animation studio as I need it. Batch render, same thing. Dynamic commands is one that you'll definitely want on. Uh, so I would click that one on display modes. You'll need to be using display mode. Dynamic groups is kind of like an option if you're going to be doing a lot of dynamic. I, I don't use it a lot, but I do use it on occasion and i only really activate it when i really need it a uh, gym report same thing i can just activate it when i need it layers you'll definitely need metal weight same thing don't need it until usually everything's done so i don't activate it uh, projects and projects legacy depends on which one you like i prefer the new uh, projects but if you want the project le legacy it's a little bit different uh, and we'll go into that maybe in a later video, but, uh, I use just the projects properties I use because I check things all the time. Are they closed? Are they, you know, closed surface? Is it a open curve? Is it a closed curve? Uh, all those kind of things. You'll need, uh, that one probably check quick commands. Definitely because it's very easy to go in there and, and grab a bunch of things. Uh, recent commands. I, I, it depends on what I'm using. If I'm using clay, you, I definitely use recent commands, uh, especially sculpture and we'll go into that in another video but for this one i'm just going to turn that off for right now uh we'll activate it uh render studio again same thing don't, don't use it until the end so don't really need it ring sizers on a, a sp specific occasion i can always activate that from the tools menu uh so i don't really need that and of course uh, we probably need the ribbon bar right uh so those are the ones i have activated uh that i use quite often those are the main ones that i really kind of use now the way you can set this up any way you want uh you can first of all let's talk about the quick commands here because in matrix 3.10 uh, uh there's some new commands uh or new things that you can do with the recent commands if you don't know already uh you can uh, drag things in to your quick commands uh very easily so let's see we're, most of these are all uh, uh tool things right but you can, you can, if you don't want something in there, um, do uh, parameter ring rail. 
uh, you can just grab it and drag it off out into the, your viewport and let go and it will remove it from the the menu the thing that i really uh always make sure when i set it up is that the my join split trim gr group and ungroup are all right together it doesn't matter where but uh, i like them all grouped together so you can uh, make them a little bit smaller you can make it bigger by just uh, holding down and dragging it out right but i i like those all together right uh because it's just easier and quicker for me to know exactly where they're at uh having them grouped together versus on two different layers uh also you can uh if you want something added in like that rail we just took out you can just bring it over and drop it in right so you could also set it up by going to your uh plus menu here and now we have a new tab right so we can right click on that we can rename this one say we want uh curves curves uh in here so that we don't have to go now the curves you you have all these but I, these are kind of small and of course for for me and the videos that i do it makes it to me a lot easier to uh for people to see and follow along but if you'd like them smaller that that's good to go you're good to go but if you want them bigger you can just click on your cogwheel here and then you can just drag this and make them a little bit bigger and then click right so now they're much larger uh easier for me to show as i'm doing videos but if and also if you're working on a laptop you might want to make them a lot a little bit bigger but as you can see as we make them uh bigger uh we we lose some of them right uh but not too much uh so let's make this a little bit bigger here uh the main thing that i put in my curves here is i have all these r r readily available uh so i don't really worry too much about these but maybe there's some in the drop down menus that you use or instead of scrolling all the way down here to your edit tools and stuff like that like uh, for instance um uh duplicate edge i like that one over there because i i don't like scrolling all the way back down to that end to get it uh, a duplicate border throw that one in there uh, i also do the extract iso curve non-parametric i throw that one in there uh and also match i use that a lot and then also i use fit to tolerance a lot uh, for curves, uh, and uh, let's see, oh, uh, non-parametric adjust curve seam. I use that quite often on certain things, uh, and whatever you want, you can uh, throw in there, but usually uh, just uh, the ones that uh, are, you have to scroll down to get, uh, I just kind of throw those in there uh, pretty much it just quickness right instead of having to go up scroll or if you're in working with gems you need a curve you go back and you got to duplicate something you got to scroll all the way down and grab it and down, drop down menu a lot quicker right and you can keep adding uh, other things in there by uh, left clicking to add and then right clicking to rename uh, this one will will name uh solids and you can uh, go to your solids menu and drag them in. You can even name one if you wanted to. Um, rename uh, parametric uh, commands. You know, and, and you can drag all those uh, in there. Oh, solids, parametric commands. Okay, because that's so long. Parametric command. Oh, yeah, you can't move those around unfortunately but just click on them and you got them right uh this one i'm just going to go ahead and uh close i don't want that one out there for right now okay uh save tab layout load tab layout so you can save and load tab layouts but anyway let's keep moving forward real quick uh now here uh this i like to see all of uh projects uh I usually drag this one up and drop it right below my quick commands. So if you saw what I did there, uh, I just grabbed the, the bar at the top there and I could put it at the 
the bottom of it. I can put it at the left side, the right side, right in the center. So they're grouped together, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And it, or I can just put it above it, right? I usually put it at the bottom here and then uh, get your defaults or whichever one has the most that you use a lot so you can see them quickly and drop them in there. And then the projects, I really don't need to see very much of the projects, just the last two boxes right the very last because i can always scroll up and down to get uh after i put a bunch of job bags i can just scroll in there and now my uh, display modes are right below my projects and then my layers i usually drag up i don't i want to see all my layers now especially in matrix 10 uh is because uh you'll get a lot of things dumped in your rhino layer here uh, when you're doing certain things and I'll, we'll go into that in a later video, but uh, I like to have access to all because I you do use quite a bit of them uh, So very quickly to get to and this side I pretty much just leave alone. Maybe my uh, pro Don't need that so a project so I can get more space for my dynamic commands And then I have this kind of setup. There is one thing when you first load you're going to get your curves menu lined up, right? This will be set as default, but maybe you don't want your curves there. You want uh, your tools menu because the first thing you normally go to is a ring rail or so, or a ring yeah a ring rail or something like that. You don't, you're not if unless you're doing a lot of pendants or something like that. But if you're doing a lot of rings, probably first thing you go to is ring rail. So you want that to be the first thing to open up, right? So what you can do is also go in here to your um, yeah you can go in here to your cog wheel there and you can see that default category is curve you can just click on that and we're going to go into a lot more of this here later too uh, and you can click on tools and then click that uh, done so now uh, I'll show you at the very end uh, when we close it out and open it up your tools will be at the top as to set as default okay so we have our first uh, and unless you want to change anything down here, we can move the command line to the top or we can have it floating or whatever. Uh, but uh, I usually just leave it at the bottom, but you can change that. And we'll talk about that in another vi video when we get into talking about all the, all the preferences in here, right? Okay, so we have it set up, our first window, the way we want it. All right uh, now we want to set it up in our secondary so it'd be very quickly to do uh, secondary so here's our secondary right and it's this will be the default except it'll be on curves uh, and then we'll go in here uh, and then we'll go to our view and I am not going to click off anything what I'm going to do though is drag everything my quick commands off my recent commands, I'm just going to close out. Uh, my display modes, I'm going to drop right in there with my quick commands in the middle. Uh, legacy, I don't want. But I do want the old uh, or the new projects. So we'll add that in. And then I'll click that and drag that right in there in the center. That one in the center. And even my dynamic commands in the center. And also my properties in the center. It's like, oh, wow, there's only one box now. now I got all this viewport. So this is a really good way to set it up for uh, if you're using uh, a, a laptop that's with a smaller screen, right? You have a ability to uh, ha get lots of uh, view in here, right? Uh, get the most out of your screen right and then all you have to do you have a very small box it doesn't take up much space you can drag it anywhere you want it uh and then you can just kind of rearrange these maybe you're going to use you're thinking um uh, quick commands probably one of the most used uh and then uh, layers probably uh property uh metal dynamic commands you'll want to check out quite often uh, but you can uh set it up however you want gem report i don't really need that in there uh metal weight uh, don't really need that in there You've got projects display modes so i can go through here very quickly uh and set this up however i want and i can just scroll down as i need things very quickly uh to set it up any way you want right 
and just by clicking here uh, and then you have a lot more space to work with so if i want to add a ring rail in here real quick ring rail got that and maybe i want to add a profile so i'll go add a profile uh and then got that and then go to surface uh, sweep one uh here and here click got it uh, now i can scroll through here and go back to edit things complete command so now i can edit my profile go through here i want to change that profile uh, it just makes it a little bit easier to uh you know more more space right so we'll change something like this and you can keep on editing and moving around however you want right so, and it makes it quickly so maybe you want to undo quick command just go back and read undo it uh so it makes it very easy to and you have the most space available uh to work with on laptop or whatever uh so next thing is uh we want to make sure that this is uh saved you don't really have to do anything uh let's just go back to our primary we have it set up the way we want it our, our primary and then we have our uh secondary here so we can switch back and forth very quickly uh, we're designing something and we want to go back to our front view, view uh primary view to for some reason we can continue designing and then switch back to our uh, secondary and keep designing uh, very easily and quickly right and this is a good way to set it up uh, to get the most view so anyway let's go back uh, and let's go back to our primary and now I'm just going to uh, close it out right we're done right we're finished uh, yeah, so nope okay we're done we're sitting we got our tools menu we're going to go go and that's there's our curve we're going to go and close it out now as you can see when i uh, put new uh, the tools clicked up there automatically when i uh clicked on new because now that toolbar is set up as default so for now on it'll just start uh click you'll see here in a second uh, the tools bar will be the default setting instead of the curves menu but you can set it up for any one you want uh, it doesn't matter all right so we'll wait for this to load up and you'll be able to i mean i think this is really good for a la laptop way to work on the laptop with the very quickly changing settings and as you can see i didn't have to save anything or do anything it just automatically will save it uh the way we set it up if we go to our secondary uh you can see that it's set up and still in there's nothing that we had to do special right so that's going to go ahead and end this video here uh just it was just real quick uh explanation i don't know if there's anything else i can think of uh we'll get into viewports in a second here that'll be our next video uh but you can you know move things around uh space wise no big deal there uh, yeah i think that's it our command line i'll go ahead and show this real quick because some people will want to change all you have to do is go to your rhinoceros uh you can set up the bottom you can set up at the top uh, you can set it up as a floating, which uh, for some reason it kind of disappears. I don't know where it goes. Oh, there it is way over on my other screen here. So you have a floating. So you can set it up uh, uh, a hidden bottom top wherever you want it. I just go ahead and leave it at the bottom and then click on that. And then every time you close it out, it'll automatically uh, set it up exactly like you have it here right without having to do anything okay so we'll end it here and then the next one we'll talk about we want to set up our viewports a little bit differently uh for uh working on two different monitors or working on a laptop or anything like that uh, so we'll be right back on that one thanks for watching good designing if the video helped you please go ahead and smash that uh, uh like button and leave me a comment good designing